Kevin Clark, last time we talked to him, was in Las Vegas at the Super Bowl. Joins us now. If you haven't checked it out already, you need to. This is football podcast. It's a must listen for any football fan. Does a great job with it. Dude has a chip on his shoulder. Look at him. Yeah, look at him. He always. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been invited to London. That's a chip on my shoulder. You guys weren't like, I want to go on a river cruise with you. And now I'm a little upset about it. I'm going to get 10 years in the NFL out of this. See, there you go. Now, exactly. Now, more ready for the interview. Exactly right. And you're, you should have been invited, Kevin. You're absolutely, I, I, I appreciate that chip on the shoulder. Whatever you can turn into a chip is how you get places, home. <laughs> It, it look this discussion yesterday that uh, kind of went viral. I mean, it did when yeah. when Caleb Williams is responding to something on you. He hasn't done that with us yet. We talk about him nonstop every day, Kevin. So uh, congrats to that. You get Caleb Williams retweeting and uh, putting out his adversity resume uh, to to uh, Greg McElroy. So by the way, let me just start with this. Greg McElroy, I think is great. I think he's, especially when it comes to quarterbacks, he's an excellent game analyst. And I think that this was. I'm going to let you set it up since you're the one that did the interview and talked to him. But I, to me, this was like, you know, in high school when we had to write those papers, you'd have your thesis, mm -hmm. and, like, the thesis was good, but maybe, like, point your evidence A was good, evidence B was good, and then evidence C just didn't quite necessarily hit all the way. I feel like that's what happened to Greg on this one. Yeah, I don't want to speak for Greg necessarily on that. So, so just so everybody knows, so Greg came on my show yesterday and said that he really likes Caleb Williams as a prospect. He's the first quarterback off the board. All of the stuff that everybody's been saying over the past couple of months. He's obviously extremely familiar with the college football uh, landscape, and, and that's what the show was about. It was about the quarterbacks and ranking one through three, basically. And he went Caleb Williams one, Jane Daniels two, Drake May three. Um, and he had nice things to say about all of them, including Caleb. And then he kind of pivoted at the end and said if there was one concern he has about Caleb, it's that he hasn't had any adversity in his career, came in as a five-star guy, was you know was behind Spencer Rattler for, for half a season, and then obviously was, was handed the Oklahoma job and then transferred Lincoln Riley to USC. And that even when USC had a mediocre season like they did last year, that wasn't necessarily pinned on Caleb Williams because they had an awful defense and, and everyone kind of knew what the, what the keys were to improving and it wasn't getting better quarterback play. That was what Greg was saying. So – Fast forward to, to a couple hours later, Caleb uh, took issue with that, listed the points of adversity that he had. And I felt like um, these were just guys exchanging ideas. I don't think anybody was making it personal. I don't think that – I don't think Caleb – I haven't talked to Greg today, but I don't think uh, Greg is going to be upset that Caleb said that. Um, I just think that it's it's Caleb – uh, making his case and the, Hey, I, I have had that kind of stuff. And I think that everybody is different. You know, when we talk about Mahomes, yeah, he's, he's motivated by, by having a bunch of teams having uh, passed on him, including the Chicago bears. He said that, right. Um, but if he was the second overall pick and did go to the bears, he'd find something else to be motivated by. I think guys who want to be motivated can find motivation. They can be self starters. So I think it's a, it's an internal thing. Um, I don't think that, um, I don't think anybody is necessarily 100% correct here. Um, I Greg was was an amazing guest with with amazing takes, and I I totally understand where he's coming from, and I also understand where Caleb is coming from. Do you have a favorite in this kind of region, if you will? Like I, I, I like I spent about a half hour this morning just watching different Kobe Bryant moments on you know, how he transformed himself from the worst player who didn't score any points when he was 10 to 12. He's like, yeah. I, you know, and, and it, it motivates me to look at it. And then you look at, you know, I've already seen in the comments, people are like, I, and I took that personally, like the Jordan yeah. part is, is, is huge from the last dance and everything else. I don't know if like you have a favor for this, Kevin, because you've talked to a lot of these guys. I mean, they find it everywhere, man. They find it everywhere, and it doesn't matter. I remember hearing a story years ago when Urban Meyer was uh, had that Gators team playing Ohio State, and they were big underdogs. He's, nobody remembers uh, what that, that matchup was supposed to, to be uh, in retrospect. But I remember Urban Meyer, as motivation, was like, we're playing in the Cardinal Stadium, and they painted it red for Ohio State. And it's like, no, what, what are you talking about? But it worked on whomever, Chris Leak or whoever it was. These guys are going to find motivation. Caleb Williams, I mean, I, I had people in my comments – yesterday with with a pretty good point which is maybe greg mcelroy's now the chip on caleb williams shoulder maybe this maybe maybe this is football has given caleb williams the ammo that was needed for him to get through a couple of workouts today you know i've, I've asked guys about that a little bit now, dominic foxworth is, is a good friend of mine i've asked him hey what do you find motivation in when it's july 3rd and nobody's watching you and you're just doing your last sprint uh, alone and he said a lot of times it's 
my life, my family's life can change. If, if I do 10 more sprints, you know, my family's life can change. If I get the third cornerback job instead of the fourth cornerback job, um, it's that kind of thing. So I don't necessarily think it even has to be like, uh, I took that personally, Michael Jordan thing, um, or, or, you know, icing out Isaiah Thomas or whatever it is. It can be very small things like, Hey, I need an outdoor kitchen. And I'm, I, that was the one thing I, I did a Vrabel story last year. Um, and he talked about, you know, he, he played and at one point he was on the roster bubble. And he said that one of the biggest motivating factors that coaches normally don't want to go to is money. Um, and, and you say, Hey, you're going to be able to support your family if you do this one specific role in special teams. And so I think, you know, there's 53 guys on our roster every single time um, in, in every single market and all of them find different ways to, to take that extra lap when it's, when it's hot, take that extra rep, take that extra, uh, weight room out. You know, I, and that's why I think the discussion you guys were having on your show was, was completely valid and, and super interesting. I also think it's part like, like, did we know, I mean, I guess in hindsight, we probably should have known, like, did, was, was, did Jordan have that at North Carolina? I mean, like, probably, but my point is, like, if we could go back yeah. in time to the draft, like, Portland doesn't pass on him if you prob- if they probably knew he was going to be that obsessive about every little thing the rest of his life. And I guess the point I'm trying to make with that is, like, I could see why Greg is making that point. Like, Caleb yeah. Williams has been, like, the guy at every single level, and here he is again. He's going to go number one overall, which has been one of his goals. But we probably don't know him enough yet. Like, he comes off the, – the few times we've had a chance to talk to him, like Combine, then we went to his pro day, Kevin. Like, he comes off as very, like, sort of nonchalant, like, just shrugs yeah. everything off, like nothing bothers me. But we don't know if internally it actually does. The way he reacted to this – and tweeted about it like at one hand you could be like uh, stay off of twitter on the other hand you could be like oh okay so maybe he does have that in him a little bit yeah so i saw both sides of that from from bears fans yesterday you know i think the vast majority were extremely happy that he was taking shots at craig uh and by extension me i'm that that's just part of the game and we all under, we all understand the content game um but i also think there were some people a small percentage who were like hey just float above it i saw you know some people say hey, don't give them the clicks or whatever and it was funny but people were like don't give greg the clicks well it's my show i'm getting the clicks so caleb can can go ahead and, and, and the and clicks do that. damn it give me the clicks um no i didn't do anything um, but no, I, I, I can see both sides of it. I mean, Kevin Durant is extremely online. He is, if somebody says something about Durant, he's name searching, he's in the comments and he's responding to it. Does that make him a worse player? No, he's one of the best players of, of his era. Um, and there are other guys who, who don't necessarily chime in on stuff. Um, I remember one time, I swear to God, um, I, 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 I forget what it was. It was I, I made a joke and I just said, no great quarterback has ever had good hair, ever. And I'm, I was correct. I was correct. They don't have good hair. And Mahomes was in my mentions with a with a gif, and he was like, "Come on, man!" And like that to me, like you just you just never. These guys are just sitting online, being like, "What's going on here?" And so I I think that especially as these guys get get younger and younger and get more comfortable online, like I I think this is going to be the norm. I don't think it's it's strange that he's on Twitter looking at this stuff. I don't know who would have sent him that. The, the, the clip actually hadn't gotten – there was a clip earlier in the day uh, where Macro was talking about Drake May and, and Jaden Daniels actually getting more traction before Caleb Williams found it. I have no idea how Caleb found this particular clip or if somebody sent it to him, but I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that um, – that, that there was a that, that he found it that he responded to it and I think that even though I Greg didn't mean it to be it could be read as personal saying hey you know you, you haven't faced any adversity and that's why I think if I had to guess and I've only I, I spent 10 minutes with Caleb he was on my show last summer going into his last year at USC and I found him extremely um professional i mean i know that as a college guy that's a weird for, ter- term but like i asked him about mahomes and he said he, you know he's just trying to be his own guy um he, he talked a lot about learning the preparation of the sport um and and sort of i said what do you have to get better at and he basically said his routine which i thought was a, a pretty mature thing for for a 20 year old to say um so but I, i'm not surprised that this is uh that that he responded to this because i think it's it's the norm for someone born in uh what 2000 we're God world. That's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. It, it's <laughs> uh, well said, uh, Kevin. I we appreciate you coming on and addressing this just the day after you know it came out. I, I do want to pivot real quick though before we let you go because something at yeah. the end of your episode, 
actually got my brain spinning even more and I enjoyed the conversation. So when you were done talking to Greg, you you sort of had this monologue at the end of your show yeah. about why the NFL needs to step in and help save mm-hmm. college football. And you brought up about how the NBA really hasn't ha- helped college yeah. basketball and they're running out of stars. And like, it's just now there's more stars in the women's game and that's why the ratings were so big. I thought it was an interesting discussion. I want to run by run an idea by you, okay? okay. And with the... With the, uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I came up with the idea while I was listening to your show this morning, so it, I haven't put that much thought into it. But in, <laughs> in hockey, in hockey, you you can draft guys yeah. and hold on to their rights while they still actually play in college. And what if we hypothetically lived in a world where maybe guys are eligible for the draft after their freshman year or sophomore year? I don't know yet which one's better, but teams could still have the option to be like, we're going to let you play in college for another year or two, depending on what they actually need. And now we live in this world where like you could have somebody, your team has already drafted playing for USC or playing for Mm -hmm. Iowa or whoever it is. And possibly if we want to take one step further, call them up at the end of the year when the college season ends. I, I think that would be one way where, Hey, if we're going to pay these guys anyway, Maybe start letting them get the NFL money after they've been drafted. And, and now, again, not a ton of thought on this, but what do you think about it? It also could be the baseball model, which is that the, the draft happens essentially before the College World Series. And so when you know the catcher's up and it's like, well, he was taken in the fourth round by the Red Sox. So there's added context. I completely agree. I think there's a bunch of ways you could do it. I've always thought the best thing for college basketball would be the old baseball model, which I think has now been changed, where you either don't go to college or you have to stay three years. Um, because I think that's – and that's changed. And they, I think the analogy is an age requirement. Baseball fans can correct me on this, but they've changed it a little bit. Um, but I think that would be – the best model um because it would keep kind of not lottery picks but like the 20th pick in the draft would play would play four years or three years and we would know who he is i think the biggest thing and i I mentioned it in my monologue is just like it it, there are so many famous people we know everything about caleb williams going into this draft he's gone through so many big games i can rattle off probably the 10 biggest games he played in and it just not that just doesn't happen with Scoot Henderson um, when he gets picked in the top five. That just doesn't happen. I mean, the only reason Brandon Miller was so famous, frankly, was because of um, of some of the legal situations last year, where the New York Times writing about it and all that stuff last year. So um, Wembyama didn't even go to college, and so the NBA needs to figure out how to generate stars, and the NFL needs to protect. Um, it's star making vehicle. They have a free minor league right now. They've got to step in because I really do think college football is going to unravel without some forces saying, let's fix this. What Caitlin Clark has done is incredible. And it's going to change the WNBA forever. I don't think the WNBA is going to become the NBA overnight. What I am saying is, is that when you have a, a star making vehicle like the NCAA tournament, you can use that to, to your advantage. And I think that the college football playoff now that it's going to be expanded, all that stuff. Um, I, I just, I, I feel like the, the NFL needs to sit down with the networks, with the conferences, and say, this is how it's going to be, because we don't want it to become that the second overall pick is somebody nobody's ever heard of. We got like 30 seconds. I know you got to go, but I, I'm giving an off the board question here. Where did the Kevin Clark motivation to get to where you've got to come from? Because you, you've, yeah. you're, you, you had, like, let's, let's go wildly successful career. This is a competitive business. Sure. Give, give, me, give me your deep dive this. on yourself. Go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll tell you a very quick story, okay? So the only job I've ever applied for that I didn't get was at the Boston Globe when I was an intern, okay? And I was so pissed at the the editor of the Boston Globe, okay? And so the sports editor. And for years I was like, I'm gonna show him, I'm gonna show him. I had a couple lucky breaks, got to the Wall Street Journal when I was twenty three. I saw the guy's name in the Patriots press box and I was like, All right, man, I'm gonna do a little do a little, you know, strength, you know, tie, you know, put the jacket on to show, hey, what's up, man? How do you like me now? So I said hey to the guy. Guy had no idea who I was. Didn't remember me at all. And I was like, that's it. I've been carrying around this motivation for five years, and this guy does not care about me at all. And from then on, I was like, you know what? Grudges, not that important. So there you go. I was pissed at a guy who just forgot that he turned me down. That was your chip on your shoulder. But you'll never forget him. (laughs) That that dude, whoever he is, deserves to go down right now. I hate him. I'll take him on. He's a good guy. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I decided to use that as my MJ, and I took that personally, and the guy had no idea I was pissed at him or even remembered that he turned me down. There it is. Kevin, you're the best. Thanks for jumping on. Everybody check out This Is Football. It's an outstanding show, and uh, he's got, he gets bigger guests than any other show that's out there. So uh, thanks so much, man. Anytime, guys. Go, 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 go.
all silly like the mayor. 